Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to another video. Something a little bit different. I'm actually playing on Board Game Arena, and this is a game called Welcome to Your Perfect Neighborhood. If you don't know it, I've got I'll leave a link in the description to an explainer. But basically, think of something like Yahtzee, roll and write, but instead of rolling, we're picking up these um combination of cards over here on the left hand side. And we're trying to fill in our neighborhood and we get points by completing objectives, using the abilities that come with the numbered cards, and so on. You'll get into it, I'm sure. Um, I've got to pick my turn. Uh, the cool thing is, compared to something like Yahtzee, even though, uh, you know, uh, oh, that's how you see the person's score sheet. All right, I learned something new. Um, there are four of us in this game, but we're all playing simultaneously, which is amazing. Uh, this is a game I discovered a few years ago, uh, and there was one summer in particular with my wife. We played it pretty much. Every day, at least three games a day. <laughs> so we got a bit obsessed about it. Anyway, I need to go. Um, should we pick up a park first? What objectives do we have? Six and six, three, three, four. Uh, yeah, let's pick up a park, shall we? And we'll pop it here right in the middle. The eight of the park. So basically, what you're trying to do is you're, you're taking the numbers from the left-hand side. You pick one number. And you put it anywhere on your board. Uh, the only rule is it has to, the numbers have to uh, ascend from left to right, but they don't have to be in sequence. So it doesn't have to be one, two, three, four. It could be one, three, six, eight. You know what I mean? They don't have to be completely in sequence as long as they're ascending left to right. Um, and the numbers are between one and fifteen. And then um, in order to try and complete these objectives, you have to then put a fence on the left hand side of a certain numbered group of houses and a fence on the right hand side and that creates an estate. So for this first objective at the top, I need an estate of six houses together and a state of six houses together. So that means there has to be a block of six and a block of six anywhere on my board. They don't have to be adjacent to each other, but within that block of six, all six houses have to have numbers on them. Um, so what I did, I put an eight in uh, this row and I got a park um, and it just gives me points on this little track at the top. There's lots of things you can get points for in this game. Um, I th think I'll pick up a six fence. I'll leave space for the seven. Um, try to go for this middle objective. So I'll put a fence here. Oh, oh. right. And that's telling me what my opponents have done. Um, at the moment, I mostly focus on what I'm trying to do and not what on they're doing. Um, okay, do uh, do I take out another park? I need 9 and 10 pool. I'm going to risk it. Risk it for a biscuit. Yeah, so there's loads of ways to get points. The more parks that you build in your street, the track on the top right of each street increases up to the maximum value. Uh, there are things called pools. So if I build, for example, I'm going to do this right now. I'll take this 5, put it here beside the 6. And because there's a, a pool ability and there's actually a pool in this house that I've just written the five in, I gain that pool and I basically gain points in the pool section at the bottom of my school sheet. Um, you can, I can use this ability in a house that doesn't have a pool in its garden, but then I lose the ability of the pool. Um, so there are parks, pools. Um, this one is called Temporary Worker, the orange one. So basically what it allows you to do is you can increase the value of the number that's associated with down to two lower or up to two higher. So if this was say a five with the orange sort of barricade symbol, then I could write a three or four or five or six or a seven, as long as they could be legally placed. And then you scratch off one of these little um, diamonds for the temp worker. And the more that you collect, the more points you get at the end of the game. Uh, I'll play my turn and I'll explain the rest. I'll do four fence. So fences um, can be placed anywhere. So the screen right now is highlighting all the places I could put fences. You don't have to put it adjacent to the number you've just written in, which is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, even though I've written the four in this house on the left, I'm actually going to put the fence beside the eight. So I've locked off three, three, and four. So I can try and get this second objective. You don't have to complete the object objectives in order, in whatever order you see fit. If you think that your opponents are going to try to rush one objective, you can maybe try and go for another objective uncontested. The game ends in two different, uh, two or three different ways. I can only think of two off the top of my head. Either when one person has completed all three objectives, or 
when one person has made three has had three turns in which they cannot place any number because the game doesn't allow you because of the way you've organized the houses in your street um you're blocked from doing so uh, i'm going to put in another two in a fence um i guess i should just split this bottom street of mine in half so i can create the first objective of six and six let's do that <clears throat> Nice. Okay, I'm going to show you the estate value thing. So I'm going to take this seven. I should I could I should probably take the seven park, so I can complete the park thing at the top. Yeah, I'm actually going to do that. I'm not going to do this uh, the estate financing thing. I'm going to take the seven, pop it right here in the middle, and it means now I've completed the final park for the top street. So I've got a boost of points from four all the way up to ten. So it's quite important they try to get that final park if you can. I'll com I'll explain other stuff as we go along. Um, I said I'll leave a link in the description. Um, it's a bit hard to explain it very quickly on the fly. Um, what is this? Layout settings. Oh, I can change the layout. Oh, uh, I don't know if I like that. Mm. Now is not the time. <laughs> and that's the help she was explained. Um. Uh, what do I want to do this turn? I have to start building other streets, I think. You don't have to build it all in the same street at the beginning. You can throw the numbers around any way you like. You've got lots of full flexibility with this game. So I'll take a five park, I think. Uh, what do I want? Five. I think I want the five here. So I'm already planning. I need one, two, three, or four. So I'm trying to. It's also possible to get zero because of the temp work. You could take a one or two and make it down, you know, reduce it to a zero. So let's build a park. In the bottom street, or third street, I think they call it in this game. Uh, okay, right, I'll show you the financing thing since it's available. So if I take this six with the, the increasing money symbol, if I pop it here next to the five, right, the bottom section here on my screen is flashing. And basically what this does is for every estate, an estate is when you've got these blocked houses. So at the, in the first street, I've got an estate of three, and I've got another estate of three already completed. So at the moment, an estate of three is giving me three points. It's like the lowest value on this track. So I've got three points, and there are two estates of three. So that's times two, so I get six points. But if I scratch off... If I put the ability for the financing into the three, now it means that estates which are got three houses in each are now worth four points each. So you increase the value of your estates. It's kind of nice. Oh, ah, oh, damn it! There's fourteen park. That'd be quite useful at the top. Oh well, never mind. I will put fourteen park. I think in the bottom. Uh, no. I think I take nine park. No, I should probably take 14 park while it's available. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'll put 14 there at the end. Oh yeah, when you complete an objective, you can actually reshuffle the entire deck. So if you kind of, if you're very good at card count and you realize that there's lots of cards that you want have now been reshuffled into the deck, you can um, try to get them back again. Nobody's completed an objective yet. Um, what do I want to do? Don't want 11 pool because 11 pool, that's going to cause problems. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Nope, don't want to do that. 6 fence, not really, so I'm going to have to go for the 10. 7, 8, 10. Yep. Put the 10 in there, and I can finance again. So I will just increase the values of my 3 since I've got those points guaranteed. So I've basically gained an additional 2 points by doing that because I've got 2 estates currently which have got 3 houses each. Oh, there's a 13 with a park. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, I'm not getting the things I want to try and complete this as a second objective. Someone might beat me to that. At the moment, the scores are very, very close. Um, I'm going to have to go with seven fence, aren't I? I'm going to have to put a fence into the middle row. Um, well, I need a one, a two, and a six. Well, let's get the six done. One, two, three, six. Pop it there in the middle. Nope. 
Nope, still not getting those pools. I'm trying to look and see. You can actually see the ability that's going to appear next. So there is a pool coming next. So I hope it's going to be a number that I can use for up here. Um, well, what I can do here, I can put the 12 up the top. Yeah, so just makes it closer to complete the second objective. And I'll finance the threes again. So that's another two points in the bag. So every three estate I make is worth six points. I should have maybe been putting it into the sixes, since there are three on the objectives, but I might not be able to complete them all. That's the thing. Fifteen pool. Oh, you little... <laughs> That's not what I want. Um, I'm going to go for four park, aren't I? Four park. That's another two points at the bottom. So I've only got two more, and I've got 18 points for... That third street in terms of parks is very good. No objectives yet. Now let's see how my opponents are doing. I haven't looked at this yet. Okay, they're not close. Oh, well, I mean, they're not too far away from completing the six and six objective. Uh, same with them. Right, they've got a 3B, so they've used uh, the biz ability. Um, so you can put two threes beside each other. But the thing is, then you get minus points for doing that. So you don't want to do that very often. But it means if you claim an objective very quickly and you win the game, then um, this person needs to try and get more fences. Okay. Um, is it not what I want? <laughs> uh, don't really want a temp worker either. So if I put this 12 in here beside the 10, it means I'm, I need a 13 to go here. Well, if, need be, if I need to give up the pool, I'll give up the pool. Uh, I want to try and complete parks. That'll be a huge amount of points if I can get that. I've got a fence and a pool coming up, so you never know. Five pool. Nope, that's not that's not what I want. So this is the biz thing I was talking about. So for example, I haven't got a, a good situation. Well, I could actually. If this eight with the biz, I can put it in the first street beside the eight, because you can't have two eights beside each other, but here you can make an eight B. But then I'd get minus points at the end of the game for that. Now, you also get minus points at the end of the game if you have turns where you can't play. Um, right, if I put the 8 in here, I'm going to have to give up the pool. But honestly, I might just have to do that. There's nothing else I really want to do. So yeah, no pool, which is a shame. I can build a fence. So let's build a fence in there. Oh, someone got an ability. Oh, an objective. Yep. Someone completed the six and the six. Who did that? Red player. Okay. We kind of said they were close to completing this, and they did. That's very good. So that, that three Bs may be worth it then. Oh, they've already done another one with a B. What's the other B that they've done? Oh, 12 B. Oh, wow, because they rushed that then. Okay. That is a way that you can play. Um. Oh, dear. Um. Really not getting the numbers I need in here. Nine and tens. Um. I'm going to have to do a six in here with a park in Second Street. Start getting that built out. I might be able to nab the third objective if I get a six completed quickly. 15 park. Yeah, I'm going to have to go for 15 in there. Getting a 15 is really nice. Can you just shove it to the end immediately? So you don't have to worry about it. You can get higher. If you get a 15 in one of these orange temporary worker uh, abilities, then you can get push it up to 17. I haven't had the combos. I don't know how well everybody else is doing for that. Let's see. Oh, none of us have used a temporary worker. That's what's called temp worker, right? So if I can get just get a couple, I might be able to get all seven points for that. It's based on who gets the who has the most of these. Ten fence. Uh, so, yeah. mm. I might have to start giving up these pools. Um, a little bit of a shame, but yeah, I'm gonna do it. If I can claim that second objective, that'll be amazing. And if I'm not mistaken. 
that is the last fence that I need. Actually, I'm going to move the fence to a different place. Nope, nope. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> I was misclicking all over the place there. Oh, oh, see, there's a 15 with a temporary, so I could have got up to 17. Oh, well, never mind. I will put a 14 in here next to the 15. And I'll increase the value of 6s in the hopes that I will complete some at some point. Come on, give me 13 pool. Come on, you know you want to. I could have got a 13 in here in the bottom street. Hmm. Oh dear, yeah, I'm falling quite far behind. Yeah, not working out for me at the moment. Once I get some things completed, I'll have I'll get a lot of points. I only just discovered that this is on board game arena. Um I haven't played it for ages. So there's a summer where I played it easily three rounds or three games a day every day right now what uh right i'm gonna have to put the four in here so value of sixes again so the things when you do like parks and pools they're like immediate points but with these estate financing you're investing in something that you may get at the end of the game, or you might not. I mean, so if I can try and get all three sixes completed, I'll have 12 points for each. That's a lot of points. Uh, three park. Do I complete my parks in the third row? I have to give up a pool for it. Hmm. Nope. I'll do it in the second row. I'm really spreading myself out. <laughs> Which is not the way to play. Hopefully I'll be able to complete objectives quite quick. I'm able to get objective in one turn, then another objective the next turn. Hopefully my opponents will put all their eggs into one basket. Yeah, I'm falling quite far behind. Hopefully I can turn this around. Seven park? Yeah, it's going to have to be seven park. The thing is, so the numbers in the middle come up more frequently. So placing middle numbers early is a risk. But a lot depends on how the numbers appear. I've got 14 points for my parks in the middle row. That's decent. So that'll be a big spike of points. Why is red players so far ahead? Oh, they have completed all of the parks. Goodness me. Yeah, that'll do it. I don't know if we'll be able to stop red player. Okay, so now you can see a couple of these uh, numbers have been blocked out because I can't play them. So I have to play the nine park. So that's perfect because I can play it in the third row. And I've got 80 points. Park's there. So I've got a bit of a boost. Oh, I think red player just lost points. Now, why is that? Oh, they're doing more B numbers again. Ah, so the other thing you can do with the biz ability is you can put the 4B to the left-hand side of the number. So you got a 4B and then you got a 4. So losing a lot of points because of that. If they're filling their board quickly, then it's not a bad thing to do. Yeah, I'm going to have to try and complete an objective here because this is... I'm going to have to give up this pool in the third row. I could put the 13 in here in this street. Yeah, I'm going to do that instead. Come on, I'm going to hold out for a 13 pool. Like, come on. <laughs> got to get it. There's no, there's, there's got to be another, another 13's got to appear at some point, right? Nine pool. Oh, I've got my nine pool. I've, I've completed the objective in the first street, finally. Yes, let's go. So... I'm validating the uh, second objective, and this little thing that's appearing here is you have to block off these estates. So basically, you cannot reuse these estates for other objectives. You can't reuse them. So the way you play it, if you're playing in the physical version, you put a, a bar along the top like this to show that these estates have been used. It could be used for anything else. Oh, that's a huge 
through some points. Oh, I've overtaken the guy in... Uh... Oh, no, they've completed the objective as well. Okay, never mind, I spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, and we did it on the same turn, so we both claimed the higher value. Damn. Right, I'm going to have to put... I'm going to have to give up the pool here in the middle, I think. Yeah, I'm going to have to. It means I need an 8, a 9, or a 10, or an 11 to complete that 6. So I'm giving myself a lot of options. Ah, oh, there's a 10 pool. Classic. Right. Has anybody got a temporary worker yet? N a couple. Okay, I can try and tie them here. So I'm going to use this temporary worker. I'll write it as a 10. That's scratching that off. Oh, what? Oh, well, that was a... <laughs> I didn't get that objective. Oh, man, I put all that investment into the six estates for nothing. I only got one completed. I was one missing. In the bond one, I had two more to get. Wow, that was a complete waste of time. Well, it got me a close third place anyway. Ah, uh, yeah, red player just stormed ahead. That's very interesting. I've never, I haven't, when I've been playing, normally I haven't used these visibilities just because of, you know, getting the negative points. But if you're able to rush things, not a bad way to do it. Um, oh man, I was so excited. <laughs> I thought I was gonna, gonna complete at least one more objective in that time. I was one short of getting the third objective. I needed a five in here with the pool or two in here, and I would have got it. Yeah, so I was one shy. I was one shy of getting either the first objective or the third objective. That would have got me probably second place. Ooh. Oh well. C'est la vie. Oh, I just realized I was playing with all French people. Oh well, c'est la vie. That's very appropriate to say that. <laughs> oh well. That's welcome to your perfect neighborhood. Um, as I said, a, a draw a, a draw and write, I suppose, if you want to put it that way. You're drawing cards rather than rolling. But it's very good, and the fact that you can all play simultaneously, and you're all picking from the same objective cards is great. So you can sometimes copy each other a little bit in terms of the cards that you pick. There are always a selection of three numbers here on the left-hand side, and then three abilities which are paired with it with them. Uh, it doesn't matter how many players there are. Um, uh, and it's great. So you can all just you can you can play with as many people as you want. Uh, there's also an app version of it. So you, when you buy the game physically, there's a, a score sheet. Um, I, think, I don't know how many. It might be like a hundred in there or two hundred. But there's also an app you can download, which is free, and it's just like a score sheet like this that you can write on. Uh, and it can also then calculates everything automatically, so you don't need to get the calculator out afterwards. Um, oh well, ninety three, not my best. Uh, with only one objective completed, that's a bit of a shame. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's what happens if you rush through, um, rush through things. So, yeah, how many, they, yeah, they got three is at the end, and that's, that made the difference. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't, uh, get any negative points. I was able to play one number every single round, which is decent. In the game I just played as a little practice earlier, there's a few, there, I had two rounds, which I couldn't, and my opponent had three rounds where they could. So, yeah. Uh, always good to see it like that. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, then, and if it's a game that now you want to pick up because of it, then that's great. I'll play some more um, over the summer, and I'll sort of release them periodically. I'm going to go through Board Game Arena and play a mixture of different games. Um, so, yeah, feel free to check out, check back on the channel. There's a playlist who I'll leave in the description with all the games I'm playing, just as a, a variety content. Uh, it's not like my normal... Fear of Dracula content, for example, which is you know a lot more sort of in depth in terms of strategy and more of a series. Uh, this will just kind of be me picking and choosing different games, so you can come back and find any sort of games that interest you. Anyway, thank you for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in another one very soon. Bye bye.